Hey there YouTubers, in this video I want to talk about what I take to my gigs in my stick bag. So this isn't some kind of crazy thing where you're going to find some odd stuff in my bag. This is literally what I take as a working musician to my gigs with me, whether I'm playing interstate, internationally or locally. This is what you would find every time without doubt in my stick bag. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the front pocket. So in the front pocket, what do I have in here? So the first thing I have is my in-ears. Now, as you can see, I've actually got my in-ears in. Yeah. So they're not in the box, but they are usually in my stick bag whenever I'm going to a gig. So I make sure I have them. Now that is not only just for monitoring, like through a wedge or anything. Sometimes sometimes you've got a wedge, sometimes you don't, you need in-ears. But sometimes I do gigs where I need to be playing with backing tracks and having a good set of in-ears can make a massive difference. So I did end up forking out and I got some UE 18 Pros and I really like them. I'm not endorsed by UE at all. Maybe one day, who knows, but uh, they're awesome. They're expensive, but they are awesome. I've also then got a lead that goes along with those, an extension lead. So having an extension lead can really make you a lot more comfortable on the kit because there is nothing worse than being stuck with a short lead to a mixer and you almost feel like, oh, I can't move from this thing and you have to play like this. So having that extra room so you can be free and move around makes a massive difference. So the next thing that I have in here is a backup set of in-ears. So these are just some in-ears that I got that came free when I bought my UE 18s. These are, I think, UE 900s. I've never actually used them, uh, but they're in there as a backup. They're not custom molds, they're just normal ones. And as far as I, all the reviews say, they're actually really good, so check them out. So next I've got a whole bunch of drum keys. Now, you, I say a whole bunch, there's two there now, but usually I've got anywhere from one to six drum keys in there. So you might think having six or so drum keys is excessive. Yeah, it probably is. But what I find happens to me every time is I take one out of the bag, I use it and I put it in my pocket and I forget that it's there. So then I go back into my stick bag and luckily there's always more drum keys in there. And then when I see that there's one, then I go on my house rampage and I start pulling apart stuff and I put find all my drum keys and put them back in. So that way you're never stuck without a drum key. So another little side tip, take one of your drum keys, put it on your car keys, so you've always got one no matter where you are. And, and don't ever take that off. Even, I know it's, it's hard to tune drums and do stuff when you're, it's on a big lump of keys, but trust me, as soon as you take that thing off, it's never gonna go back on there. So just keep that in mind. Next, what I've got in here, I've got a little lightning bolt to what are they called, 3.5 mil adapter. And that's because uh, sometimes you might need one of these things. So when I'm teaching, I'll connect my phone to an amp or sometimes I'm using an iPad at a gig or someone's forgot a lead or something and the uh, device may not have a jack being an Apple device and it's just handy to have one of these around. Okay, the last thing in that pocket is a little splitter. It's an aeroplane adapter splitter. So having one of these things can be a lifesaver because there's nothing worse than going on a long flight, sitting down and going, oh, I'm only getting one side out of my headphones. So having this thing will make your life better. So putting your in-ears in that you've spent a lot of money on is much better than those cheap $2 headphones they give you on a flight. So having one of these is very, very handy. Now onto the big compartment, the main compartment, what I've got in here, first thing, is a pair of brushes. So I have had these brushes for about five years and I'm telling you that I do actually use these quite a bit and they still look and feel brand new. Mainly because I always make sure I put them away when before I put them in a bag, it's very, very important. And try not to twist the bottom. Super, super important not to do that. The thing I love about these Promark ones though, uh, is the rubberized handle. It's not only grippy, but when you wanna do some cymbal rolls and stuff like that, they're very, very handy. I don't tend to have mallets in my bag, but I find that these can really make up the difference between having a mallet if I wanna do a cymbal swell without having that stick attack on it. it can give you that kind of mallet -y kind of thing. So these are awesome. So the next thing I've got in here is I've got a little Behringer two-channel mic 
amp, headphone amp, and a power adapter, and it's tagged. So in case you're playing at a venue where they require it to be tested and tagged. So the main reason I have this little two channel mic amp in my stick bag all the time is because there's nothing worse than getting to a gig and you need a little mixer and you don't have one. So I always prefer to use a bigger one because I think it's a little bit better than this to get a bit more output, but this is a lifesaver. It can get you out of some jams. So if you're playing with a backing track, you've rocked up to do a filling gig and there's no mixer provided and no one told you you had to bring a mixer, you've got one. So it's, it's really, really handy. In this pocket at the front, I've got another emergency, emergency drum key for the time where, hey idiot, you took all the drum keys out and you haven't got any again and you lost your keys. It's, there's one there. Again, it's probably being overprepared, but I really hate being without a drum key. And lastly, of course, I've got sticks. Now I've got a few pairs of new sticks and a few pairs of used sticks. And the ones that I've used is I put a little mark on the top. So it's just something I like to do because I'll, when the sticks are matched in the bag, rather than try and play with something that's a little bit off and just grabbing a pair of sticks. To me, there's nothing worse than having one stick really heavy and one stick really light. So what I do is when I buy a brick of sticks or I buy a lot of sticks from the shop, I will put little funny markings on them. Like in this case, this has three dots. And what that does is it tells me that these sticks are matched and that butt end is facing up in the stick bag and I can just grab them and I know that those are the sticks to, that I play with. The other thing I do, which is a bit OCD, I guess, is I have my used sticks, the ones I use all the time, over on one side and the new sticks on the other. Again, just OCD. So some of you are probably thinking, hey, where's your emergency felts? Where's all this kind of stuff? To be honest, most of the time I'm using my own gear. On 99% of the gigs I do, I'm using all my gear and I know that all my stuff is there. I've got all my felts, I've got everything. So I don't need to carry extra ones in my stick bag. And if I ever do get stuck, I'll just tear another felt in half and do that. So generally speaking, when I do do international gigs or interstate gigs, if I get there and the gear, is, there's stuff missing, it's kind of like it'll be what it'll be. I just make do. Sometimes I do a bit of MacGyvering depending on what I, I need to do. But generally speaking, I've been very lucky and most stuff is there. And if not, we can organize it and it hasn't been a problem. So I hope this video helps you guys out there. Like I said before, this is just what I take. It's not the be all and end all of everything. Everyone's got their own little things that they like taking. This is just what I've found works for me going to the gig. I don't tend to have any uh, hot rods or mallets and all that kind of stuff. Just because of the type of gigs that I do, I generally don't need that kind of stuff. If you liked this video and you found it helpful, please hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe and hit the little bell so you can be notified when I upload new videos. I'm trying to do one every week and we're getting closer to giving away the DW snare drum. So if you're unaware of that, I've got a video on my channel called Who Wants to Win a DW Snare Drum? And when we get to 1000 subscribers, I'm going to give that away live on my YouTube channel. So if you're not a subscriber, there's your incentive, go get onto that. If you'd like some more in-depth lessons, please check out my website www.intodrums.com. You'll be able to find a link right below in the description. So there you go guys, hope this video helps you. Until next time, happy practicing.